Okay, let's try this. I want to show you visually, if I can, what it means to be born again, to be born of the Spirit of God. Alright, so first of all, let's... This is going to be a man, okay? This is going to be the flesh. Alright, so that's going to be a representation of the fleshly man. We are all born in Adam, right? So let's take a verse to support that. I mean, obviously in Genesis 2, verse 19, or yeah, 219, or you can go to Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. And, um, we could go to 1 Corinthians 15, 22. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Alright, so let's do this again. Okay, I'm going to make the same fella. A little bit, oh wait a second, that's kind of goofy, isn't it? That's a little bit too goofy. That's, here, I'll tell you what. This is how I draw with a regular pen. Regular pencil anyway. This is what my stuff looked like when I was in school. So, I'm used to it. You're probably not. So, this is going to be... The new man, okay, that's born of the Spirit of God. Alright, so we got all are born in the flesh, but not all are born in the Spirit. So we could go to John 3, And it says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And this is uh, in a conversation with Nicodemus. And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. So this is being born of the water, and this is being born of the Spirit. And the reason why he says water is because, you know, of course, when a woman's water breaks, the baby is born, comes out of the womb. Okay, so we're all born of the flesh, but we're not all born of the Spirit. Just like Jesus says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So when you are born of God, you become born of the Spirit. And so you have the Spirit inside the flesh, or however you want to describe it. So now you're not just born of the flesh. You're born of both. You're flesh and spirit. Think of Jesus when he was when baby Jesus was born, he was born of the Virgin Mary, but he was not born of any earthly father. So he was, if you want to say it in this way, you could say he was born half flesh and half spirit. Flesh from his mother's side, spirit from his father's side. So also must we be born of the flesh and of the spirit and to support that let's go to let's do it this way right, let's just use that one therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become 
new, for in Christ Jesus neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but a new creature. So we are a new creature in Christ. So, um, let's see. You know what? We got time. Let's do this. Let's go all the way with this. So in John, let's do it this way here. In John, let's see, 14. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. And so, okay, so let's do it this way. So the Comforter is the Holy Ghost. All right, so let's go back up a little bit. I'm going to do it this way just so we can see it. All right, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. He's talking about the Holy Ghost, which is the Holy Spirit, which is the Spirit of God. It's all the same thing. Okay, but when the comforter is come, whom I will send unto you from the Father, even the Spirit of truth, which proceeds from the Father, he shall testify of me. And then John 16, nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. So when we are born of the Spirit of God, we are born of the Comforter, of the Holy Ghost. We are born of God and let's just do it this way let's keep going let's see what's the word I'm looking for here I will not leave you comfortless I will come to you so what Jesus is saying is that he is the comforter he is the Holy Ghost he is the Spirit of God. He is the one that's going to abide in you when you are born of the Spirit of God. So you have Jesus in you. So this illustration here, when I write Spirit here, this is really Jesus. Jesus is God Almighty. Jesus is the Spirit of God. Jesus is the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the Comforter. Remember, he says, I will come unto you. Right? I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So we are a new creature born with Jesus in us. Okay, why is that so important to understand? I think, you know, a lot of people will probably agree with that, right? Makes sense, doesn't it? Well... I'm telling you, people get goofy because they don't read their Bible. They don't believe their Bible, which is just as bad. Okay, but let's go to Revelation 20. And I saw thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God. And which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands, and they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection, on such the second death has no power. But they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So you'll often see people say well how can jesus be reigning or, or if they say how is jesus reigning right now you, all you have to do is go to luke 1 and verse 33 right and say he, he he's not only reigning right now he reigns forever there is no end to jesus reigning and he shall reign over the house of jacob forever in his kingdom there shall be no end there's no end there's no beginning He's from 
everlasting to everlasting. Okay, so there's no end. There's no period of, there's no time period of Jesus reigning. So, that's a hard one for people to get over because they want to say Jesus is reigning a thousand years. It's not mentioned here in Revelation 20 at all. It says, and they lived and reigned with Jesus for a thousand years. So they being uh, these people that are blessed and holy that has part in the first resurrection. All right. So this is why I illustrate this, because when we have Jesus in us, we are reigning with Jesus during this thousand years. Okay, there's no mention at all of him, you know, being on earth, as some will say. I mean, I, I don't want to go over the whole list of errors that people make, but I just want to show you very simply that, well, how, when somebody asks, how is it that Jesus is reigning, or how is it that we are reigning with Jesus now? I mean, it's, it's pretty obvious, but... Uh, People have this worldview that this is coming after the return of Jesus. And they are utterly befuddled when you point out verse 11, which is the return of Jesus. So if he was already on earth, how does he come in the clouds of heaven? A second time I've heard fools say that. that well, he's coming a second time, too, and a third time, and a fourth time, and so on. I and mean, people just are ridiculous. This is all happening right now. And then, of course, uh, what, what about Satan? He's not bound right now. Well, in context, uh, he is bound right now. And when he is loosed, the context is he's going to gather all the people. And that they're going to be gathered at our feet while we are lifted up in the air. And they're going to be made to know that God loves us. And then fire is going to come down from heaven and destroy them all. Okay, just it's all it's consistent all throughout the Bible. It's saying the same thing. It's giving you every possible angle that you can understand. Jesus speaks in parables, and he says the same thing. What we're reading here in Revelation twenty. Okay, and then one more thing, since I got a minute, um, to show you that we are partakers in that resurrection and his resurrection so when we are born of the spirit of god we are risen with him i'll have to find that Buried with him in baptism, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God, who has raised him from the dead. So we are risen with Jesus Christ in uh, spiritually. Okay, so when we're born of the Spirit of God, we are risen. We are partakers of that resurrection that first resurrection blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection so jesus being the first fruits of them that have risen let me see if i got this right now, but now is christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept so when he was raised up into heaven, received up into heaven. He promised before that that he would return to gather us. And he explains this with many parables. And so we are partakers of that first resurrection. We are reigning with Christ right now when we are born of the Spirit of God. And, you know, some fool said that, uh, you know, uh, that this, the priest in, where is this at? They shall be priest. They shall be priest of God and of Christ. And he tried to say, well, that's not happening now. And it obviously... When we're 
called to preach the gospel to every creature. Uh, we're called to be priests. And in 1 Peter 2, verse 9, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. So we are a royal priesthood. We are royalty right now. Just as it says in Revelation 9, Blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection on such the second death has no power. Right now, the second death has no power over us because we are saved. We are sealed until the day of redemption. Right? Once saved, always saved. That is the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. And without it, you have no peace. You cannot possibly have peace without it. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. So we are sealed forever. The second death has no power over us, and they shall be priests. We are priests of God and of Christ, and shut. And we do reign with Christ right now because we have Jesus in us right now. Those of us that are born of the Spirit of God. So all this is consistent with every other scripture in the Bible. There's no contradiction. There's nothing that is different. It's just, I mean, it's worded different, it's, but it's saying the same thing as we see over and over and over again and all throughout the Bible. It's giving you a very simple message, a very clear message, and it, it's, it's explained from many different angles so that we might understand better. And again, verse 11 the great white throne, that's Jesus. And him that, the, him that sat on it, that's Jesus. The earth and heaven fled away. Whose face, the earth and heaven fled away. This is the sun being darkened, the moon not giving her light, stars of heaven falling, and the powers of heaven being shaken. All right, so he's, <laughs> this is all, uh, consistent again throughout the whole Bible all right this is of course the judgment and this is the end of the world right here this is the end of the world so if you go to Matthew 24 mark 13 Luke 21 when Jesus describes the end of the world when he's asked about the end of the world this is the end of the world again consistent with everything that we read in the Bible all right 